the good news of Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of St. John in the 10th chapter. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the good shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so that there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This last week, this last week, our flags have flown half-mast out of respect and in memory of the recent death of former First Lady Barbara Bush. In the days following her passing, she has been mourned and remembered for her extraordinary life, her wit, and her authenticity. In an interview she gave a while back, She was asked about her fake pearls, to which she scoffed and made a comment about someone being out of their mind for paying for such pearls to be real. It was clear that while Barbara Bush's pearls were false, she was not. She knew who she was. She knew who she was not. She lived her life purposefully, and following a service yesterday at St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston, she was laid to rest finally in her beloved Texas. I have to think that she lived her life faithfully. Often the passing of family, friends, loved ones, and notable personalities that were also a part of our lives as a matter of the times we live in causes us to take stock in our own lives. Wonder about the meaning of it all. For me, I come away almost always with a sense of just how temporary we are making life all the more precious. God has given us this life. It is precious. And we are called to live it in God's mission of love for the world, for others, for God's glory. We are stewards not just of 10% of our time, treasures, and talent, but we are stewards of our whole lives for God. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks again of life. He proclaims himself the good shepherd, being the guardian of life, his own and ours too. Life. Life is the whole point of John's gospel. Remember John 3.16, For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son, that whoever believes in Him might not perish but have eternal life. This is the thesis of this gospel and the guiding principle of all the scriptures therein. In embracing metaphor and claiming I am the good shepherd, Jesus is taking up two Old Testament tropes for God, which tell us much more about him than the simple word shepherd might invoke in our contemporary imagination. First, 
We must remember that when Moses was negotiating with God through the burning bush, his new assignment to return to Egypt to free God's people, Moses asked God for God's name. God's response was Yahweh or I am, which is no name at all, but rather a claim of being of being here and now, of always being before, of being on into eternity. Seven times in this Gospel of John, Jesus identif identifies himself as I am. In addition to I am the good shepherd, we hear I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the way, the truth and the life, and I am the true vine. Jesus knows who he is. He is the I am of Moses, about to lay down his life and set his people free from sin. And there's more. By claiming himself as the good shepherd, Jesus identifies himself with the Lord in yet another way. The shepherd known so well from Psalm 23. Jesus is the shepherd who provides, protects, and preserves all the days of our lives. Jesus knows who he is. He is the shepherd who is about to take up his life in resurrection in new life, and set his people free from death. Since the time of King David, the kings of Israel guarded as shepherds of the people. To say the least, these shepherd kings were a cast of characters with their faults. They were murderous, adulterous, idolatrous, greedy, and hungry for power. In this day and age of reality television with the real wives of Atlanta, Beverly Hills, New York, I think the real kings of Israel would be a show I'd be willing to watch. In contrast, the real Jesus offers himself as not just another shepherd king, but as the good shepherd, the kind of shepherd that God always wanted for us. And just what is it that makes a good shepherd good? Jesus is the good shepherd because he is a good steward, a good steward of his life and the lives of those in his care. Jesus spends his life bringing in to the flock those who were previously outsiders. The whole Good Shepherd text that we have for today does not just stand on its own, but it is part of a much larger section of the Gospel of John that begins with the healing of the man who was blind from birth. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, brings him back into the flock not by just giving him sight for the first time, but rather instead, Jesus performs an even more astonishing sign. Jesus works the miracle of faith in this man, who by the end of the drama is kicked out of his community by the religious authorities, only to be included into the kingdom of God as a believer in Jesus. Jesus spends his life shepherding the blind man, the lame, the lepers, the hungry, the poor, the sinners of all kinds into his own flock, the flock of the children of God. The good shepherd is good news to the outsiders. We know he spends his life on the cross, but he also spends his life in his ministry shepherding disciples for the kingdom. 
in his resurrection in Easter, he calls us to continue his good shepherding work. Just this last week, Facets celebrated 30 years of service in Fairfax County. Facets well known to Emmanuel Lutheran, and Emmanuel Lutheran is well known to Facets for good stewardship of time, talents, and treasures that go to help in a mission of helping parents, children, and individuals who suffer the effects of poverty in this county with a vision to end homelessness here. On Thursday morning, Facets hosted a breakfast celebrating their 30 years, celebrating a community that has pulled together to help and celebrating all of the people who have been helped over those years. Being a part of Facets is being a part of making a real difference in people's lives right in our own community. Being a part of Facets is good shepherding. Yesterday, our families with young children gathered, about 11 families in all. We came together at the Lamb Center and were given a tour by Deacon Dave Larrabee. Children and their parents learned about the struggle of homelessness and the good shepherding effort happening at the Lamb Center to give people a place to find help, to get their laundry done, to have an address, to get clothes, and to be fed, both physically and spiritually, in so many ways. Following the tour, the group put together bags of trail mix and colored thank you notes for volunteers. We are never too young and never too old to make a difference, to work together doing the work of the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, is still shepherding through the body of Christ on this earth, through Emmanuel Lutheran Church and so many churches like us, and will continue to do so. The Good Shepherd will continue through all those who carry on as good stewards, Spending their lives and all they have like Jesus did. Spending their lives for others. In service of and to the glory of God. Amen.